The End of the Day is a unique painting by Joaquin Soroya that is never talked about. It is an easel-sized oil painting on linen, 88 by 128 centimeters, approximately 34 by 50 inches. It was painted during his visit to a charming enclave called Javia, or Shabia in Valentian, in the province of Alicante. It was also Joaquin Soroya's third stay in Javia, between the 5th of August and the 18th of October in the year 1900. I believe this painting was done in autumn, when the sun is lower in the sky. Notice how the rich terracotta, yellow, and cream tones are illuminated by the intensity of the afternoon sun. Their vibrancy brings out the contrasting depths and textures that transform the legendary Cabo de San Antonio. This is a massive headland that stretches into the Mediterranean Sea, at the foot of another popular Javia landmark, a mountain called Montgo. This colorful land mass is depicted in flowing brushstrokes, allowing the light to be captured spontaneously. Soroya takes the intense colors and scatters them with dabs of his brush over the contrasting deep blue of the Mediterranean. It is late afternoon, as the title suggests. The sun has left Cala del Tango, a bay where the men pull their boat ashore. In the foreground of the picture we see two Valentians pulling their sailboat onto a small beach area, while a young man at the stern of the boat keeps it from tipping over. Their posture and physique suggest that they are exerting great effort and strength to pull the boat out of the water. The young man at the very front of the picture is wearing a beret. This type of hat appeared in Spain shortly after the Carlist Wars, around 1900, along with the Parisian influence, especially in rural areas. Later, it spread to urban areas through artists, writers, and the socially and politically mobile people of Spain. During the Second Spanish Republic, several political figures began to wear the beret in public. This particular beret has a tassel, as worn by supporters of the Carlist movement during the First Carlist War from 1833 to 1840. It is unlikely that this young man is a supporter of the Carlist movement himself, but that he acquired the cap secondhand. The older man, the second in the picture, is wearing a worn rodina. This was the typical Valentian male hat worn by all classes. A lot of seaweed has accumulated on the rocks, indicating rough waters. The sea tends to rip out all the vegetation in a storm and throw it onto the shore. However, this pile of seaweed provides a soft base for the hull of the boat. I marvel at the great academic precision with which Soroya has mastered the fabric and intricate folds in the sails, as well as the clothing of the boatman. Another distinctive feature of this painting is the foreshortening of the boat. It is not a simple technique to render an image in such a way as to create the illusion of projection or expansion in space. In its entirety, this painting is in keeping with the Romantic style, which was very popular at the turn of the century. The reason for this is that it was very common in Romantic landscape painting to paint a portrait of nature, to show its monumental beauty and splendor, but then to insert very small human beings as if nature could not be admired on its own but needed the human element to be complete. Years later, this idea was challenged, and the landscapes became tributes to nature, without human intervention. In this painting, we see that Soroya has indeed placed some very small people on the shore playing on the rocks. He has also placed a sailboat in the distance close to the rocks but far enough away that we can feel the gigantic size of the cliff rising out of the sea. However, because Soroya has also placed larger figures in the extreme foreground, directly in front of us, the painting can be identified as a costumbrismo. Those who study art history with me already know that the costumbrismo movement was a subcategory of the Romantic movement. Costumbrismo was an artistic movement that began in Spain in the 19th century and spread throughout Europe. It opposed the influences and rapid technical progress of the Industrial Revolution by expressively depicting the daily life and habits of Spanish society. Basically, it stood for the search for one's own social identity. In summary, 
The End of the Day is a wonderful composition in which Soroya introduces his viewers to a unique seaside lifestyle that would fascinate art lovers in the rest of Europe. He makes use of the twin genres of romanticism and costumbrismo, placing the landscape in the bright sunshine and his fellows in the shadow of the end of the day. Dear viewers, I want to extend my sincere gratitude to each one of you for taking the time to watch this educational lesson on video. Your support for SpainLifestyle.com is greatly appreciated, and it means so much to me. Through your engagement with this video, you have shown a passion for learning and a desire to expand your knowledge on Spain's unique and wonderful culture. I am honored to be a part of that journey for you. As I work hard to continue to bring you the best educational content, I encourage you to visit my website SpainLifestyle.com for more lessons, books, and informative articles. SpainLifestyle.com also has a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. I also have several historical textbooks and interesting travel guides on Amazon for you to read, learn, and enjoy, all with colorful illustrations. Once again, Thank you for your support and for being a part of my Spanish art lovers community. I hope you will enjoy everything that SpainLifestyle.com has to offer.